Welcome to another video from ICTO. This week we're going to be concentrating on the Filmic Pro app. We've used this for a couple of times in our uh, filming now and uh, you would have seen we've made some errors as well in ours. So uh, this video goes over how to fully set up Filmic Pro to give you that cinematic effect and hopefully get some of those really good shots coming up. So guys, hopefully a very quick video on just some of the tips and tricks that we've picked up uh, from the using the Filmic Pro over the last couple of videos and some of the things that uh, you should take into consideration if you're looking for that really good, really buttery smooth um, cinematic effect and to make your videos go to that next level. So let's get straight into this. First thing, let's have a look at some of the settings that you need to make here. So let's have a look at resolution. Um, by default, out of the box, it comes with a um, 1080p filming. Now, if your smartphone supports it, you can ramp this all the way up through 2, 3, up to 4K. That will give you the highest quality possible that your phone supports and give you that really clear, crystal clear video. Next one down is the bit rate. So we want to ramp this up as far as we can take it. Some phones don't support it, but the Filmic Extreme is 100 megabits a second. That is, you're getting far more megabits in there, far better quality um, in your filming as well. So when you go into post, you'll have far much more to play with. And then the video codec being used, um, we can reduce the file size and everything by going to H.265. Just be warned that some of the video editors don't support that um, format. But, um, you know, the, the standard ones out there will support H.265 going forwards. Just along the top, you've got aspect ratio as well. So you can actually set things like one-to-one -one relationship aspect ratio. Very good for um, Instagram filming and things like that. But for now, what we're going to do is set it to 16.9, the default, and come out of that by clicking outside the screen. Next thing we're going to have a look at is the frame rate. So frame rate is the frames per second that you're going to get. By default, it's in 24 frames a second. That's actually very useful for the cinematic effect. It gives that little bit of motion blur, a little bit more realism to the film that you're going to get. If you start going up to the 30 frames a second, you'll start getting a little bit clearer in there, but it doesn't feel as realistic. It doesn't give it that cinematic effect. Most cinematic effect is now done in 24 frames a second. If you want to go slow-mo, ramp it up as far as you can just note that we're limited to 30 frames a second here we're on a pixel 2xl and that the iphones can do more if you lower the um, thing down to 1080p then that opens up to the 120 frames a second it's whatever your phone can support but for now we're going to keep that at 24 frames a second the next bits we want to get onto is the lighting so down in the bottom left corner here you'll see this color contrast wheel and, that. and just something to point in here is this is where you're going to set your color tone. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is that it's all fully automatic at the moment. We've got it set to auto white balance. You can go through some of the presets, whether you're in um, indoor, whether you're all doing outdoor, whether it's cloudy, whether you've got tungsten lighting. And you'll see in the background, it changes the color tone of it. You've also got the ability to set presets in there. All you do is long press on those on the chosen setting once you've made it, and then you can store that. And then you've got auto white balance. Now, the other thing to note here is, is you'll see that temperature is constantly fluctuating as the lighting changes. That's very useful in an auto white balance, but when you're filming, you don't actually want your contrast, unless it's a deliberate um, thing you're looking to achieve, you really don't want it fluctuating too much. So the trick in here is once you're happy with the color tone and the white balance you've got, click on it again, set that to uh, red, that locks in the white balance uh, for you there. And then as you come out, you'll see now the white balance is fixed. We don't have to worry about um, the color changing too much on it. Let's go back into here. Now, if you've bought the cinematic pack for Filmic Pro, it also opens up the ability to do log. So log, basically you'll see the change that this makes. It desaturates the picture in the background, but gives you two more stops in HDR um, for post editing as well. So you can use LUT packs, you can color grade much easier in log or flat. I tend to go with um, log in here, take it back into um, post and the blacks will really be black, the whites will really be um, popping as well. It gives you far better control over that. So a recommendation if you're doing cinematic effect is lock the auto white balance in and then film in log version two, which is that setting there. 
click outside and come out. Next thing we're going to have a look at is these reticles. So the reticles here, you have two of them. You've got a contrast wheel and you've got the focus. So apologies all the way through this, I keep calling it the contrast reticle and actually it's called the exposure reticle. Anyway, on with the video. So let's have a look at the contrast first and that as you move it around the screen, it will adjust the contrast as you go around. So again, it's giving you the little bit of control over the contrast. Now, a recommendation again, if you look at some of our previous videos when we were walking through the Sussex Downs, you would have noticed the, the sky keep changing the contrast in there as more sky came in, less sky came in as it was picking up on my black um, coat. So a recommendation here is, is once you are happy with the contrast setting you've got, lock it in place by clicking on it once. And the same can be said for the um, focus. So you've got the ability in here to move this reticle around and base the focus where you want. So we want to bring the Olympus camera in focus, we put the reticle over the top of it. We want to bring the man on the bench in focus, we put the reticle on top of that. So you can see it's very easy to set manual focusing in based on that reticle. Once you're happy with it though, once you're happy where the uh, focus goes, again, recommendation is lock it in place and then you won't get that um, defocusing or refocusing every so often as you're filming through, giving you a much better quality to your um, filming. Now, one of the things here though is um, it might be intentional to do that or you might want it to be able to refocus a little bit. So these reticles also allow you to do something else is <clears throat> what you can do on them is double click on them and that puts the reticle into fully automatic mode. So it's effectively where the camera's pointing um, towards that center, you'll see it's much bigger now, that reticle will pick the autofocus for you. And now what you should see is we've got a contrast between the camera and the guy on the bench there, um, as opposed to the um, short throw and the, um, the focusing we had before. You can do exactly the same for the contrast reticle if you wanted contrast to be fully automatic but be less pinpointed because as we say this is a very sensitive um, thing and that so let's have a little look uh, we can move that around and it's very sensitive or double click on it and we can bring the contrast reticle out to um, to the screen uh, to the whole screen and therefore the contrast is taken as a whole it's putting the thing into fully automatic you can also, again, lock these in place. So once you're happy with those, lock those um, things in place and then it will give a, an overall contrast and overall focus quality there as well. Clicking on them again just brings them out of the thing. Double clicking on them will bring them out of that fully automatic mode and allow you to start doing some of the manual stuff in there as well. So one of the little spoilers you would have seen there is, is we can have even more granular control over this by putting the camera into fully manual mode. So what you've seen is, is it brings in these little sliders from the outside and what we can do is we can manually adjust the um, exposure in there, we can manually adjust the ISO, we can then once we've adjusted it we can lock them in so that's us just purely doing this with exposure or we can um, we can take the uh, controls off and allow the thing to utilize ISO and the uh, expo con uh, exposure ratings to give us the right effects that we want. Same on the other side, <clears throat> so what we will have, uh, what we've got on the other side is we can then control the focus aspect of it on this side as well. So you'll see that we can actually pull that focus in manually, we can set the focus where we want to, we can draw a uh, pull the focus wherever we need it to be. You'll also notice these little um, I, uh, these little lines here as well. And what that means is we can actually set points where we want the focus to pull to and from, click on them, and then we can have that automatically pull in those. And you'll see it will slowly do it. Now there's this little slider here as well that we can adjust that will adjust the speed at which the focus goes. So now we've got it right up the far, uh, top there you see how quickly that focus pulls backwards and forwards. If we drag that right down to uh, the pull speed of one, you'll see how slowly we can make that focus go. So again, real granular control you have over the contrasting and the focus aspect of it as well. And you simply, you can control these uh, by simply clicking on them uh, around where you've set that focus. So if we've set the focus to there, 
click on it and you'll see that's now where the draw focus will be. Not just for focus, we can do that for zoom as well. So we have the ability to zoom into this, um, this image as well and zoom back out. And we can again control that level of focus and zoom at the same time. We can zoom it in. Again, the speed thing here will allow us to adjust that as required. So we can do a controlled zoom. And again, in post, that is a very smooth um, zoom in, zoom out uh, capability that we've got there. So again, very granular in these. Some of these options that you would have um, that uh, you may not necessarily have found when first using this, we found, and it just makes those elements of your um, script, uh, your filming, come so much better, so much more professional looking, rather than it just looking like it's being filmed on a uh, smartphone. Now you've also noticed we've got. Um, let me just take these back out of uh, automatic and manual so they're now on the uh, semi-automatic stuff you've also got this zoom slider here as well so you'll see we can actually control zoom now have a look at what's going on underneath there you'll see that there's a little indicator changing from green to red what that basically is saying is is that's judging the quality of the image that's going on whilst we're zooming so the aim would be is whilst you're using this slider just keep it within the green area so you won't lose or uh, you won't lose quality in your filming but again it's very powerful this um, functionality you've got so that's some of the settings that I would go through. So a quick recap of where I think you need to be setting some of these things. Resolution, get it to 4K, get it to 100 megabits a second, use H.265 if it's supported. Set your aspect ratio if you want that or do it in post. Then we did the frame rate, 24 frames a second by standard. Go to slow-mo if you want to, get those action shots. A word of advice though, if you're doing slow-mo, make sure it's got plenty of action in it and then you'll get that. Uh, you'll get the effect that slow-mo really gives you. Go up to 60 frames a second and then play back in 24 frames a second. Do that in post, don't do it in this, otherwise you will end up with a file that is at 24 frames a second and you won't be able to manipulate it in post. So always capture and play back in the high speed that you want in here. Um, set your white balance, so set your white balance and then lock it in, always lock it in and film if you can in log mode, perfect for, uh, it's a desaturated look in this but once you're colour graded it is a phenomenal um, control you've got. Once you're happy with all of that, then the next trick is to come into presets and then save those values as something that's memorable to you. So say for instance um, they, that's your 4K camera settings, come in here Put that in and now you've got everything set up so if you go and pack into this application go into your presets load that and all of your settings will be there um, set you won't have to keep on coming back in to reset this so guys i hope you found that useful hopefully it's a, a quick uh, whistle stop tour of filmic pro <clears throat> if you've got any questions or any comments or uh, you'd like to know further information around the filmic pro app and how we've used it um, with the Pixel 2 XL and on the Osmo Mobile 2 gimbal, then please drop comments in uh, into the comment section below. And please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so uh, already. If you have, thank you very much, really helping us out. And we will see you on the next one. Thank you.